Welcome, everyone. This is another episode of todebate.net. I am Sebastian, one of your two co-hosts, and my co-host, as usual, is my dear friend, Dirk. What's up? Who was How are we doing today? Oh, well, well, I guess you're much better because a couple of days you were a little bit sick. Yes. Is it what? Winter, winter is coming, as they say? Or it they gives to me say? a surge of energy to sit here with you, to debate with you. Also, I don't want to show any weakness because you, you strive on weakness when we debate. Ah, that's interesting. Do you know, this is what I read in, uh, I think it's Tim Ferriss's Tools of Titans, I believe, or Tribe of Mentors. I don't remember. He was interviewing Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. I think it's the transcript of the podcast, actually. And Schwarzenegger initially started uh, as, how do you say, bodybuilder yeah. in his career before being an actor and then governor of California, uh, or ex-governor now. And uh, what's interesting is he used a psycho psychological tactic, and I think I may have mentioned this before in a podcast, maybe, I don't remember. Uh, if I, I'm probably repeating myself because I'm getting old. Um, and if you don't remember this, and if our listeners are not remembering, they're getting old, and you're getting old, <laughs> it's okay, it's life. So the psychological trick he used on his um, opponents uh, in bodybuilding competitions was to, in the locker room, look at other guys who were actually perfectly fit and tell them, is there everything okay with your knee? And it makes people very self-aware and self-conscious and wondering if there's actually something wrong with your knee or with your elbow or whatever, right? which actually psychologically makes you weaker when it comes to actually competing right after. It may or may not have an effect, but... Statistically, it actually seems to be proven that you would have an effect on others because you're implying a planting doubt in their minds that something is wrong with them. Yeah, there is a there is an. Are you feeling okay today, Dirk? Are you feeling okay, Dirk? Because I see that you're uh, drooling a bit. There is a fascinating documentary <laughs> that you you find on YouTube as well. That's called Pumping Iron. Pumping Iron tells the story of the young Arnold Schwarzenegger back then when he was a bodybuilder and he actually um, won the the Mr. Universe uh, competition a few times and there is a moment in the documentary where you see that in action where he basically has a conversation with his strongest opponent and you would say up until that point it's not really it's not really clear if Arnold Schwarzenegger can win it one more time. But I swear to you, you see the guy break in that conversation. It's like you, between Arnold Schwarzenegger and the guy, if you watch this, you kind of see the moment when Arnold really? practically won. So yeah, I, Pumping I recommend iron. Pumping Iron. I recommend that documentary in general for, I mean, it's a weird, a weird scene. And Arnold is a weird guy. That's That's for sure. But it's a very interesting documentary. I'm trying to see if it's on YouTube. It is on YouTube. It is It is on YouTube indeed. Yeah. Uh, if you search for it, you'll see 3.4 million views and 74 minutes long. Excellent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download this for my next flight. All right. Excellent. Thanks for the recommendation. So now I'm interested in hearing how you transitioned from Arnold Schwarzenegger pumping iron psychological warfare to our motion of today. Well, uh, it seems that maybe some companies are not doing great. So, uh, is everything all, all, all right? <laughs> is everything <laughs> <laughs> shit? This is such this is such a terrible transition. <laughs> great. And since, and, since and, and since we're both Europeans and probably rooting for for European companies, I guess it's good. you're not you're you're probably going to agree with me, right? But the American company, the big giant Boeing. It's not doing that great, is it? Oh. Right. I see. I see the knee of Boeing a little bit weak. Yeah, the, the knee the of feet. Boeing is a little bit weak. Uh, let's see if Boeing can pump a little bit more iron. Yeah. You. Uh, but well, you suggested the motion, and you were. I mean, you. You. You were pretty dark by asking the question: Is Boeing doomed? And uh, that's the motion of today. I Boeing is doomed. Is the motion, and we argue over it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I thought with the uh, crashes that were mentioned a lot in the press last year in Indonesia and earlier this year in Ethiopia, both because of the, was it a 737? 737 Max, 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 yeah. Max 8 uh, uh, denomination of the plane for Boeing, both crashed apparently because of this automated system which takes into account the angle of the airflow, especially at takeoff. And if the angle is too steep, there's a risk that the plane is stalling. So automatically, the software would put the nose down 
um, to prevent from this uh, prevent this from happening. Unfortunately, it seems the pilots and the manual was not explaining this properly enough, and that the correction of the of the nose would be quite steep and quick to the point that it becomes almost impossible if there is a mistake at the input, the data input level, which is apparently what happened in those two crashes. So ever since, these planes have been grounded. All the aviation authorities around the world, not starting by the US, surprisingly, surprisingly, because usually it's the country of origin of a manufacturer which decides to ground the plane and then everyone follows suit because that's the way it usually happens. But I think it started off with maybe China and or maybe Europe, I can't remember, and then the US finally decided to also ground the planes. So ever since, all these planes and hundreds of potentially new planes which have been produced since then are sitting on the ground and uh, parked on the ground and there is no resolution in sight for now. Um, it seems that the planes are not going to fly again before at least January, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the status. It's actually a big fiasco for the company. But the question is, is this potentially a doomsday scenario for Boeing in the long term or the short term or not? Or is it just a mishap that all companies experience, especially, um, and well, not especially, but even if, if it's pertaining, pertaining to the lives of people, of the customers of, uh, of the company? So that's the context. Sorry, it's a bit long, but it's just to remind people of what we're talking about. And uh, yeah, that's it. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add for the context? Um. No, I think you covered everything I would have uh, covered there as well. I have nothing else to add. Boeing, of course, is a very flashy example, but we get to that in our actual debate. All right, let's do it. You're the first one to go, as usual. Our uh, repeat listeners would know that we select sides randomly uh, a few days or a few weeks prior to recording this podcast. So that gives us time to prepare our side, but we don't know what the other side has prepared. So every time we respond to the others, uh, the other side's arguments is actually pretty much live in the sense that we are uh, discovering these arguments and preparing our response. And, uh, and that's it. So that makes for the fun of it. Some is prepared and some is improvised. You have two minutes, my dear friend, to expose your arguments before you get thrashed by me. No pressure, no science, no psychology. I think my, 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 knee, is, my knee is hurting now. Your brain's going to hurt soon. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Boeing is doomed, you say. I very much doubt that, honestly. And the reason why I'm doubting that is straightforward pure mathematics boeing is one of the two leading aircraft manufacturers on this planet the other one airbus actually airbus loses more money right now than boeing did because of the a380 fiasco for instance so argument number one boeing is still making way more profit than any other airplane manufacturer it has a solid revenue. Yes, it has to cut losses. Yes, it makes less revenue than before because the 737 MAX uh, disaster. But it's still a solid 60 billion revenue per quarter. I doubt that this company goes down anytime soon. Secondly, because it's so big and because companies of that size tend to be governmentally important, it's too big to fail. Before Boeing goes down, the U.S. Gover government will uh, jump in and help them. Thirdly, I don't even think that uh, this problem, this uh, callback, this tech uh, disaster is big enough to really have a long-lasting effect. If, uh, if any indication, you can look into technology history. There have been massive technical failures in the past, sometimes costing hundreds of lives. Uh, car manufacturers had to call back billions of cars at times. And all of these car manufacturers are still around. If that's any indication, why should Boeing be any different? Yeah, so overall, no, Boeing is not doomed. If anything, Boeing continue to strive. <laughs> And now on to 
Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. People are scared. And when people are scared, people don't use the products that scare them. And this is what's happening with Boeing. It has seriously damaged its credibility as a company to produce safe planes. People have refused to take the, the MAX 8 planes when they were not grounded yet by the U.S. authorities. Now, what you could say is that over time, people will forget. It is true. Like terrorist attacks, people come back to these touristic places where terrorist attacks have happened over the years. Things uh, change. The problem here is there's so many mistakes that have been committed, unlike any other incident in the history of aviation or maybe other technical failures, that I think it has damaged the credibility, the trust uh, of, uh, of people, of consumers and customers towards Boeing. Let's go through a list of these mistakes. And the way I see them, they're roughly um, at three levels. One, communications. Very poor communications as to what happened and deflecting blame and not accepting blame initially. I think that was a, that's terrible for user trust in general. Second subset um, of problems, it's and, and, I will, and we'll go through three engineering problems here, which really worries me for a company which is building things, which is an engineering company. First of all, poor design of the planes. So desperate to win market share, Boeing put larger engines on the same plane frame. And that, that was a problem because of the dimensions of these larger engines. So they had to make these adjustments of where to put them along the plane, more forward or backwards. Uh, whether you're talking about the newer or the older planes. So that was already a mistake from an engineering standpoint, trying to desperately retrofit something. The second mistake, no backup sensor used. There was just one source of data, and that failed. Then tough luck, you're dead. That's a massive engineering mistake. Now, it can happen, but when you add this to the previous mistake I mentioned, it becomes really worrisome. Add to this a third issue. Trying to solve hardware problems, the fact that you have a larger engine or a misconfiguration with a software fix, really? Really? Do I really want to believe in engineering design when you're trying to fix a hardware issue with software? I'm worried. Orders are being cancelled. It's very tricky on a longer term basis. It reduces the amount of cash flow, the investment in new planes, the investment in innovation, and even keeping employee and employees happy. Right or wanting wanting to innovate. So overall, I am really worried about Boeing's long term fate, and I'll come back to other things we've mentioned later on because I'm out of time. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. All the things that you mentioned are good points. They work for Boeing as much as they work against Boeing. Why is that? By now, everyone who wants to know kind of heard the whole story about how the 737 MAX crashed. So we all heard about the 737 MAX 8 actually being a repurposed uh, 737 something else. And that the main reason they did it the way they did it was to comply, uh, to not be forced into getting a full-blown new airline in, off the ground because that requires a lot of licensing effort and so on. So they decided to go with an existing model, put other engines on it, stretch it a little and fix it with software. All these things we know. That will work for Boeing. Because they can say, okay, mistake made, we learn from it. Here's the campaign to reinstate trust. Speaking about trust, that is a key factor, and you mentioned it. And you had on, uh, Boeing is not selling airplanes. Boeing is selling trust in their machinery. So let's talk about this. Right now, there are 10,000 Boeings in operation, and compare that to the 300 737 MAX that are grounded. Since the 737 MAX 8 have been grounded, orders of 737 MAX 8s are still coming in. Airlines still believe in that airplane. I heard voices of pilots saying, the machine is a good plane. There has been a design flaw that the design flow needs to be a uh, flaw needs to be addressed. But in general, it's an awesome plane. If you, as a passenger, hear the, these words from pilots, you're gonna reconsider if it's really that bad. And I personally flew with Boeing machines since we are both frequent travelers, for better or worse. And I bet you 
just boarded Boeings just the same. Knowing that it's not a 737 MAX 8, you probably were just sitting in Boeings uh, like you were sitting in Boeings before. Also knowing the statistics that even if every day a Boeing crashes out of the sky, it's it's still pretty unlikely that it hits you. So I don't, don't think that this this will impact Boeing all that much. Also comparing to what happened in the history. I give you one example. Audi had a car on the ground once that accelerated sometimes while pressing the brake. So you were literally pressing the brake in that car and it was speeding up. That killed 700 people. It was a major callback for Audi. Is it, did that kill Audi? Did that serve for the purpose of uh, killing trust in Audi cars? No, I don't think so. Neither will it uh, happen to Boeing. Another thing, commercial airlines, as important as they are and as critical they are to Boeing's success, it's not their own line of business. They are a defense contractor. They sell security solutions. They are a financial institution as well. None of these three things will die, even if the airline business takes a hit. So, no, they are not doomed. They will continue to be around and they will continue being the world's largest airline manufacturer. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear it. So it's interesting what you said about these massive technical failures for the car manufacturers. I think there's two things I'd like to respond to that. First of all, don't you think consumers today are a little bit more conscious of these safety flaws and they react a bit more angrily at them than maybe a few decades ago? I, I, I think that people get a little bit more conscious on this aspect in terms of trust. But I would say something which I think is more important than this. Not important in terms of it, that people don't care or people are, care less or more than before. It's more the innovation aspect. I do think common manufacturers as they exist today will probably die for the most part, actually. Not only because of technical failures, but because of another point I'd like to raise here with you, and that's the lack of innovation. If these car manufacturers do not embrace, let's say, electric vehicles quickly enough, or self-driving cars, or both, they will not exist in the decades to come. I am pretty sure this is a very easy prediction to make. And this is what worries me with Boeing. It's this lack of innovation. The A380 was, for better or worse, an innovation. It was a commercial fiasco, but it was a technical innovation. It may be not a groundbreaking innovation. I'm not qualified to say this. But this is what worries me with Boeing's attitude here. It tries to retrofit an old plane. 